We build tools to help groups manage their water quality data and collect it and share it online. When you come to the data platform, we show you a little mini map view of your region and the latest observations in that region, as well as groups in your region, if there are any, and a little bit about how Water Rangers works. If you haven't signed up already, you can go to sign up and you can uh, do that using uh, your email or using social media. If you're already a Water Ranger, you can log in. I prefer to use Facebook, but a lot of people use the other methods too. Now you don't need to be logged in to view data on Water Rangers, but you do need to be logged in if you want to add new data or be a group leader. A lot of people like to go to our map view in order to uh, explore the map. You'll see when you get here that we have these sort of clusters of numbers, and these are locations that have data on them. And then an individual location, once you zoom into that level, will show the observation count here on the top in green and the uh, issue count here in red. And you'll be able to see all the observations and photos that people have been taking for our whole platform. So here's one in the Pearl uh, River down in Mississippi. So let's go ahead and zoom in to our region. If you want to create a new location on the map, um, you can click on the map and you can create a location or you can add an observation right there. When you create a new location, you can drag the, the, the pin to the right spot. You're going to define the body of water, the water body type. You're going to name the location something memorable. Um, Atlantic Ocean as the water body, we need to be a little bit more specific about where in the Atlantic Ocean that you're testing. And then again, you can see we can, um, we can change the group. If you have multiple groups, you'll, you'll notice that the form changes depending on the group. If you find that you can't see your water body, um, you can try out different maps like the topographic map or the satellite map. I prefer the outdoor map. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Here is uh, the lake that I'm at. As you can see, we have at this location 42 observations and zero issues. And over here we have 46 observations and three issues. So let's have a look. This is Lake McGlashan near the stream that comes from Lake Girard. So we've described the location and we can view the summary, which will show us all the information on that uh, at that location. You can see here we've had two water quality issues and one pollution. There's some information on uh, wildlife. And then we have our data here, which we describe as a little mini spark chart. As you get, gain more data, you may want to see it at a bigger scale and you can hit view breakdown where you can adjust the view one year or every six months. There's lots of photos at this location too. So you can go and view all the photos and you can see that there's been a lot of people that have been here doing the water testing at this location, including the winter. So let's have a look at the issues in this location. You can see that we have um, a water quality issue that's been resolved. So let's have a look at that. So as you can see, there's photos that are associated with issues. And you can see that the sand that's coming in during this rainstorm. So you also can look at the individual observations at each moment in time. So you can see the date and the notes. And if I have edited um, or if I created this observation, I am allowed to edit or delete it. You can see there's, there's other observations here that other people have, ed have added and I don't have access to uh, editing those. Each location, uh, each observation has an information um, on the tests and if you don't know what things mean you can click on what's this 
and we describe it to you in plain language as well as you can see my photos. This is part of a group called the Federation of Lakes of Val de Mont and Lake McGlashan and Girard are a group. And when you go into a group, you can see that there's a region that's been created for that group. And here's the locations associated with it. Then you can see a little summary table of how many observations and issues in each location, the leaderboard, the group members, and then as an admin of a group, you can edit the group um, with all this information. You can manage your users. So your, your volunteers, they can become admins or accepted members, and you can invite them using an email. As a group, I also can choose what kind of fields I want on my form. As you can see here, there's various options and I can drag and drop different options to be unlisted. So if you don't have the equipment for it and you don't want your um, people writing it in, you can drag it out. You can reorder the list based on your protocol to make sure that it's as easy as possible for your users to use it. When you're done, make sure you hit update. And you can also define your region that you're interested in using your pencil. I can drag my uh, thing. As you can see, we're interested in these two lakes as well as some beaver ponds that are up on the mountain. Make sure you hit save to update your thing and hit save changes. There's various settings for groups where you can e receive emails and we allow you to download data from, from that's been assigned to your group from a, a certain date range. You can also include the lat long and it generates a CSV which can be opened in Excel. You can see that here. If you uh, want to create your own group, you can go to the groups and, and it, well, you can first, you can explore other groups and have a look, um, but want to add your group, hit there, and you're gonna sign up and you can create a group here. Now we do check up on those, so make sure that you're not putting in test data. Um, only add a group if it's a legitimate group. So let's go back to our own profile as a user and say I wanted to edit an existing um, location. So in this case, uh, Chelton Beach, um, it's too far from shore in the map view. I was right on the shore, I wasn't out in the water. I can go ahead and edit the location because I created it. I can drag the piece here and I can change the water body type and other information you might have about that location. I can also edit that observation itself As you can see, I can associate it with a different group that I'm part of. I can change the date. Um, I can add in the weather and I can change the fields here. So this is the form that I have for that location. I can go ahead and edit it. So as you can see, um, lots of different options for, for tests, for wildlife, for ice watch, um, and notes on the form here. Thanks so much for watching this video on our data platform. We're committed to open data and helping communities like yours to share water quality data and to learn more about our waterways. You can learn more about our water quality test kits and online training on our website. And if you have any questions, please get in touch. We'll be happy to help.